We believe in a doctrine called dispensational truth. In other words, we believe in dividing verses to the right group of people and right time period. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to combine all the verses together and come up with a combination of messed up and wrong doctrine. So one of the important things about dispensationalism is that we can distinguish about concerning visions. Now there's a lot of people online that get caught up in these visions and then you see these people giving weird stuff that I saw Jesus on this and this other guy gives a different depiction of Jesus on that and then you're like wondering, I wonder if what he dreamed or what he saw was really real. <laughs> I wonder if that was really Jesus. So it is important that we divide these things. So were there visions? Were there dreams? Yes, there were. However, you got to realize that occurred during the time period of the Old Testament. And then as we go beyond a bit, so there's this transitional period, right? During this transitional period, you notice right here that during this time period, that the apostles, they were still ministering to the Jewish people, and then the Jewish people were slowly rejecting it more and more and more, and that's why you notice this switch to Gentiles eventually. So as a switch from Jew to Gentile, that's why you got things like visions and other signs and wonders fading away, fading away. That's what's going on. So that's why it makes sense that when you go through the Protestant Reformation and the Great Awakening revivals on how these, uh, these events, such as signs and visions, did not really happen during that time period. Why? Because the reason why is these visions were fading away more and more and more. And that's why since we haven't seen that for the past hundreds of years, what do we go by the past hundreds of years? Faith in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. So that Word of God, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. It's no longer signs, but the Word of God. That's how, I mean, we did pretty good so far with the Great Awakening Revivals. Amen. We did that with the Great Missionary Movement. And so far we can do that today, bless God. So we don't need to go by what somebody claimed he saw, and you don't know if what he saw was the right thing he saw. <laughs> so let's discuss about visions. Let's first call it revelation, right? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we will read verse 1. The Bible says, It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. So notice right here that the Word of God stated right here that I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. You got to realize that revelation, it's defined as, in Webster's 1828 Dictionary, the act of disclosing or discovering to others what was before unknown to them. Appropriately, the disclo disclosure or communication of truth to men by God himself or by his authorized agents, the prophets and apostles, that which is revealed appropriately, the sacred truths which God has communicated to man for his instruction and direction. So you'll notice right here that it's what God has directly given to man. So there are these people who claim that God directly spoke to them, that God directly revealed himself to them. And so because of that, there are going to be these people saying, oh, I got a revelation this, I got a revelation that. However, the thing is, is go to Revelation 1, 19. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19. When John wrote, now, what's the title of that book? Revelation, right? Think about that. It's called Revelation. John, he says he saw a vision, right? So within this, and since it's a book filled with revelation, what did God tell John? Look at Revelation 1.19. Revelation 1.19. The Bible says, Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things... So when God's giving him that revelation for him to write, it's going to be the things which shall be what? Hereafter. See? So everything that he's going to write about the future revelation, he's going to be writing. Don't add to that. Go to Revelation 22 now. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 22. And we will read verse 18. Revelation chapter 22. And we will read verse 18. It's a finale. 
I mean, that's why you've got to believe in dispensationalism. Dispensationalism, you have to. There is a difference from then, from, from today, from back then. Back then, they had all of this kind of stuff going on, but today is far different, right? Look at Revelation chapter 22, and we will read verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of what? The prophecy of this book, and remember it's called Revelation. If any man shall what? Add unto these things. Remember what God told John. You're going to write the things which shall be hereafter. So he's going to now mention right here, if any man adds to those things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So notice right here that you cannot add. We don't believe additional. We don't believe in additional revelation. You got everything you got, everything you need right here in your hand, that word of God. That's the revelation that you need. So thus, that's why we reject future revelation of these visions. Because go to 2 Peter now, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1. You know what's better than direct revelation? You might go, what, really? Yeah, God directly right, appearing right in front of you. So you hear these atheists, like Sean Carroll and those guys, they would say, if you want me to believe in God, then just let him show up in this room. Lawrence Krauss and all those guys. But look at 2 Peter chapter 1. God thinks differently. He says, you know what? Even if they saw God right in front of their faces, you know what the problem is with mankind? They still will not believe. They still will reject Him. That's a problem with mankind. Because your book that you got in your hand is far greater than directly seeing that revelation of Jesus in front of you. No. Look at 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 17. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. So notice right here, verse 17 and 18, they got that direct, directly. God speaking to him audibly, like directly, revealing. And yet, what did the Bible say? Verse 19. We have also a what? More sure word of prophecy. This is more sure than God directly speaking at you, revealing himself right in front of your face. Let's keep reading right here. Notice the word of God says, Whereunto ye do dwell, that ye take heed, as unto a light, that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. I mean, what is that more sure word of prophecy you got? It says colon, right? Colon, and look what it's defined. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of what? Any private interpretation. It's the scriptures. So notice, well, verse 21, let's just make it even better. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by who? The Holy Ghost. So you see that? God's word is more sure than direct revelation. Direct revelation from God is not as sure, according to that verse, this is more sure word. What's better as your evidence, what's more certain is the word of God. The word of God. I mean, the evidence is look back at the past years of your church history. The past years of your church history, that King James Bible has been preserved. That thing has been preserved all the way. So, I mean, you got the evidence right here. So, my question is this. My question is, why do you turn to, believe in, rely on more on these than on this one, the Word of God? Then that becomes a problem. I'm kind of tired of hearing these internet preachers online saying, you know, the Lord revealed to me this, the Lord revealed to me that, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, why can't they just quote scripture? And that's the difference you're going to find with our church and then the other churches out there. Bible-believing churches, they will stress more on the Word of God, Amen. more than all the other things out there. Let's also look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 through 21, which you looked at. At that verse, remember, we have the scriptures, right? That's important to remember because 
you all can prophesy. Now go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19. So do we believe in prophets today? Not prophets with direct revelation from God saying, oh, I saw Jesus on this and God told me this. No, we are prophets with the word of God. Because, hey, if you got that book in your hand, aren't you prophesying to them? You will go to hell if you don't receive Jesus Christ for your salvation. You will go to heaven if you have Jesus Christ as your Savior. So notice right there that you're prophesying to them, you're predicting to them the future. When you say to them from that book, hey, one day the tribulation is going to run, there's going to be the Antichrist, 666, and all that kind of stuff, a rapture. See, you're predicting to them that future. Now let's also look at Revelation chapter 19, and we'll look at verse 10. Revelation chapter 19, and we'll look at verse 10. Notice what the Bible says right here in Revelation chapter 19, and we'll look at verse 10. The Bible says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So notice right here that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if you have the testimony of Jesus Christ in you, then you know what you're doing? You're prophesying. Because why? You know why you're prophesying? Because when you have the testimony of Jesus Christ in your heart, that he's coming back again, and that his death, burial, and resurrection can save your soul from hell. Hey, all of you have the testimony of Jesus Christ. All of you are prophets, you got to understand. It's not some special guru that you have to wait for that, oh, God told me this, and oh, I saw God on that one. No, it's not that one. All of you are prophets. Why? Because of one testimony. Testimony and the Word of God. That's important. Testimony and the Word of God are the only basis for you to prophesy. So concerning visions, revelations, prophets, and all that, we believe that they're all gone, that they're all gone. We believe based on Revelation 19.10, the testimony of Jesus Christ. And we also believe in the Word of God based on these things. That's why we can prophesy. We're prophets. And not only that, guess what? That's we're revealing to them what God wants. That's a better, and you got to realize this, that's a better revelation. That thing you got in your hand. The thing you got in your hand is a better revelation, prophecy, etc. So that's why we believe in dispensationalism. Because think about this, church. Use some common sense. Back then, during this transitional time period between Old Testament and church age, and during the Old Testament, did they have the complete word of God? They did not have the complete word of God. They only had part of the word of God. Until John wrote that final, see that? See, he put, his, he put his writing, the final book of the Bible. Now that we got the complete word of God, that's why we can rely on that one and no longer on visions. You can't blame these people back then. The reason why God had to show this stuff is because they did not have the complete word of God during that time period. Now that we do, I mean, everyone's got it in their hand pretty much. Now that you got it, then all you need is the word of God. So are visions available today? No, we don't believe in that. Why? Because the Bible says that you can't add anything more. And God also said that that word of God is more sure than anything else. Amen. So that's what you're basing your authority on.